We're excited to introduce to you the RAIN XRE100. This is our wireless relay extender that will go test it at over one mile through obstructions. Again, that can differentiate on what type of obstructions you have, but we feel confident in saying you're going to get anywhere between half a mile up to and over a mile through obstructions and line of sight you're going to get even farther than that. So we are really, really excited about this product and for the application that it, that it fits and the, the needs that it fits for you as the installers. So today we're going to go through really quickly kind of a, a quick how-to this product works. So if you're testing one or using one, you can watch this video and get a quick idea of how it works. We have some really, really neat features that come with this product that are unique to the RAIN line of products, and so I'm excited to show those to you as well. Again. The applications for this product are if you have a broken relay wire or you need to extend something extremely far, we can pass up to two relay inputs and outputs. Our system has two relay outputs and two relay, in relay inputs, so this will do up to two uh, devices on it. And we also have an alert relay, which is really nice, and I'll show you that a little bit more. What we've done is we've tried to make this as user-friendly as possible and as installer-friendly as possible in the fact that we've put it in an extremely nice housing. This is a water-resistant housing that it's in. We've provided a grommet at the bottom, one grommet that you can push your wires through. All of our terminals are color-coded, so when you're calling in for tech support or referring to the manual, it's simple, say, uh, my, my red terminal or my blue terminal, those are all color-coded. Color and then we have given a lot of LED indicators to also help with uh, what's going on with the system and, and make it a little bit easier to troubleshoot. So you can see here we have, one, we have two XREs, an XRE100 and an XRE100. When you order these, they come paired from the factory, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about pairing them. But keep in mind that at any time, if one unit goes bad, you can buy another XRE100 from us. And with the programming button, which I'll show you, you are able to program and learn one new one to one existing one. So it's really, really nice. You do not have to switch out both of them. You can, you can program and learn them to each other really, really quickly right there in the field. Also note, and it's just kind of, uh, it just makes it a little easier, all of our terminals are removable. So you can see when I power this one down, all of our terminals are removable and reversible. So you can flip them up or down which is nice. In this case, just because my wire's a little bit short, I have it uh, pointing to the down position, but all of these are reversible. We also have our dip switches, which are located here and here, and we're going to go through the features and functionalities of that. So a basic outline of how this system works. We're going to start right to left and explain to you the different terminals. The far right of the orange terminal is your, is your battery backup terminal, which you have there. Red is your main power input. This system will do 12 through 24 volts AC or DC, which is really nice. Again, 12, 12 through 24 volts AC or DC, which makes it easy for you as the installer. The blue terminals are relay 1 output and relay 2 output, which correspond with the yellow terminal on the other device. Relay 1 input, relay 1, or excuse me, relay 2 input. So anything that triggers on relay 1 input on this unit will output on relay 1 output, and anything that triggers on relay 2 input will output on relay 2 output, and vice versa. They are bi-directional, so they're talking. You'll notice we have flashing lights. This system is redundant and checks in with itself every 30 seconds, so if there's a power failure or a blip in power and you lose power and it comes back on, our systems will automatically check back in with themselves and repair themselves to whatever state they're supposed to be in. So it's redundant. You don't have to worry about uh, if something happens and it comes back online that the relay is just going to be stuck on one end. It will fix itself automatically by checking in, which is extremely nice. And again, that's on both units. We also have provided some extremely heavy-duty relays for you to be able to use with an alert relay here, which we'll show here in a second. So here's, here's how we're going to do it. Right now we have the, the units powered up. You can see that we have a flashing orange light, which means that the microprocessor is working and the system is functioning normal. And then we have on both units three orange LED lights. 
All three of those must be illuminated in order for the system to be walk, working properly. Those are all power lights for different parts of the board. So when you power it up, you're going to see a couple different things happen. We'll go ahead and power this one down. All lights are out, and you'll see quickly. It's going to go through the receive light green, the transmit light red, the status program light yellow, and then a flashing orange. So you can see everything is working the way it's supposed to, and then the three orange LEDs. So you're going to power those up. Then you're going to decide which one you want to take outside and which one you want to keep inside or which one's going to be the sending and the receiving. The terms that we use only for technical support is the node is the unit that is out in the field and the base is the unit that is coming from the main triggering device. So if you have a fire alarm panel and the base unit is hooked up to the fire alarm panel, the relay would be hooked up to the input, your node unit would be, let's say, outside at a front gate, as soon as the fire alarm panel triggered the relay one input, it would trigger the relay one output on the node outside. And I'll show you how that works. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ground the relay one input. Let's see if I can get a ground here. And you can see, sorry, I got to hold still here. When I ground relay one, you can see the green LED showing that the relay one is active on this output. I'll release it, that LED will turn off. And if I ground relay two input here, you'll see my relay two LED is illuminated. So you can quickly tell what relay is on. And again, if I do the opposite on this unit, ground out relay one input. See if I can get it in there. Sorry. And my relay one is illuminated. Let it go and it releases. And then relay two, same thing. If I can get it grounded. Sorry, I'm stepping in front of the camera here. Relay two is illuminated. These will mimic each other identically. So if the relay one input is held, the relay output here will hold. If it's a momentary relay, it will be a momentary relay as well. Just copying whatever the other one is doing, which is really nice. Now, again, yellow is our relay inputs, blue are our relay outputs. The first two on the left, relay one input, corresponds to the relay two output on the other device. Relay two input, relay two output, and vice versa. Now, you'll also notice that we have a black terminal strip on both devices and a third relay here. This is what we call our alert relay. The alert relay was put in uh, by request and now just comes stock with the unit. And this allows you to monitor cut wires, power loss, or grounded wires, which is really nice. So if you have something out in the field and you want to make sure that the wires haven't been cut or that the line hasn't been compromised, you can use the alert relay. The way that this works is you can see we have our bank of six dip switches here on each unit. As soon as you flip the second dip switch to the on position, the relay inputs now become supervised, whoops, I just grounded that out, now become monitored or supervised inputs. Okay? So I can come over here and I can flip relay two. And if I flip relay two, you'll notice that my alert relay turns on. And my alert relay is on now because both relay one input and relay two input are being monitored. If you are going to be monitoring, we supply three resistors, 1K, 2K, and 3K. These are extremely small and they're labeled in our manual. And these are what you use in line of the device that you are monitoring. So again, you flip relay two dip switch on, now your, or excuse me, dip switch two on, and now your relay outputs, both relay, I'm sorry, both relay inputs are now being monitored looking for grounded wire, cut wire, or uh, loss of power. So because that's on and there is, now it thinks 
It's, look, it's monitored and supervised. It sees that there's a problem because I have nothing hooked up to this. And so it triggers that alert relay saying, hey, there's an issue. If I flip it on this unit, zip switch two on, now this is, these relays are now gone from just the normal state of a relay input to a monitored, monitored or supervised input. And because there's nothing connected, it triggered and said, hey, there's an alert. There's a problem. And that is coming from the, the output is coming from the black terminal here. So you could wire up a buzzer, a light, anything that you want to alert you that there is a problem. What you can also do, and I'm going to power down the unit, is you can flip dip switch three, which changes the status of that alert relay. And I'll show you here. And it makes that alert relay, and I'm going to power this one down so it, they're both configured here. It makes it so the alert relay is a pulsed relay. So you'll see now, now you could have a LED light flashing with the pulsed relay, but now you've turned the alert relay from a steady state relay or latching into a pulsed relay, which is really nice. And that can be done on both devices. If I was to flip, flip dip switch three on this device, this would become the same thing. So again, the alert or supervised relay is a really, really nice feature. If you are going to be using one of the relays to be supervised or monitored, but not the other one, all you have to do in order to not trigger the alert relay is use this 1K resistor and put it in line of whichever relay input you're not using, and that will finish the circuit and allow our system to realize there's not an issue with the unused relay. Because again, as soon as you flip dip switch two, that means both relay inputs are now supervised. And again, for more clarification, you can look at the manual where it explains it a little bit better, but it is a really, really nice feature. One of the other nice features, and I'm going to power cycle, I'm going to power both these down and then I'm going to set them to normal again. So turn all dip switches off, which is normal operation. Power them back on. One of the other nice features is that we have a communication loss uh, signal to let you know if there's a communication loss. And again, that's being used through the same alert relay that we've just been using. So if I power down one of the units, or if one of the units was to be struck by lightning, or something happened where one of the units lost power and went completely offline, our system is, is checking back and forth every 30 seconds to make sure it's in the right state and it's, it's talking and uh, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And so after three attempts of 30 seconds of no communication, so just the transmit light, which you'll see here in a minute, of red. So after three attempts, which is 90 seconds, it will say, I have not talked back to my other device in 90 seconds. There's a problem trigger the alert relay, and then you could have your alert relay output tied again to a light, buzzer, uh, whatever you want it to be tied to, camera, whatever you want it to be tied to, and it could say, hey, there's a problem. And you would know, because this alert relay is, is lit up, and you do not have any of your dip switches on, so this is not, the relays aren't being supervised, that you've got an issue with the other device, and they are not communicating for some reason. And I'll show you that here. Again, it takes 90 seconds before it does that. While it's waiting to do that, also know that our battery backup does charge the system when, main, when you have main power applied, and it, it trickle charges the system, and that's indicated by LEDs as well that are flashing that are shown in the manual. So we have, and then when it kicks on, the LED light changes stat, state. So we've really done as much as possible to make this a simple solution, but well-rounded, so that you have a lot of different features with the two relays, two relay inputs, two relay outputs, and an alert relay, which is a really nice device, and then being able to field pair them. So if you have one go bad, you can just buy one and then add it in the field. The price point on these is extremely competitive. We're really happy with how, how uh, inexpensive we're able to get them for you guys. You can see that this relay has alerted because it hasn't talked to its buddy in 90 seconds here. Okay? If I plug this back in, it's going to go through that same check state. And after 90 seconds, it will realize that its buddy's back online, and it will kick that alert relay off and fix itself and say everything's OK. Now, in order to, to pair these in the field, and again, if you buy them from us, they come paired. But if you have one go bad, then 
what, how you're going to program it is extremely simple. All you do is flip dip switch 1 on in both units. So again, dip switch 1 to the on position. And then all you have to do is press the program button once. Not in both, just in one of them. So I'd flip dip switch 1 on in both units, press the program button one time in either of the devices, it doesn't matter, and you're ready to go. One of the fantastic things about our, our device is that we do not designate which one has to be outside in the field and which one has to be at the main unit. Both units can be used interchangeably, so, so we don't care about that. Uh, and again, you can see our relay went off because power was restored and it's talking to his friend. So just a lot of features and functionality for this product uh, in a nice, simple wiring. The reason we put our terminals in the middle of the board was because we got so many uh, so much feedback that when terminals are on the bottom of the board, it's extremely hard to get the wires into the housing and then wired in. So we put them in the middle of the board, and uh, it seems to be a big hit. Real quick, let me show you in the manual. I talked about the LEDs, but you can see in the manual, you can see a layout of our board, and then our manual is going to go through and give you all of the information that you need, the power inputs, the battery backup, the LED indicators that we talked about, green being receive, red being transmit, yellow being status or program, four being flashing orange, which is good, and then five being the power LEDs. And then you can also see, which I talked about briefly, the resistors, the 1K, the 2K, and the 3K, and how you can tell the difference of them. Our package will come with all the resistors that you need to use, and then how to use the, that alert relay, which is really easy but a nice feature. So this is all offered in the manual kit. So again, this is the RAIN XRE100 re wireless relay extender. Keep up to date for our next video, which will be showing one XRE100 talking to a handheld wireless rechargeable transmitter, push button transmitter, uh, using the same XRE, which is really, really nice. And the transmitter goes just as far as these products here. So thank you for your time. Please let us know if you have any questions.